Really get a Bane's Love potential posterization block combo right there. Well, no, but I, he said after the game, though, his man bun held him down. <laughs> it was too heavy. <laughs> oh, he didn't get the elevation needed? Yeah, he got no love. He did early in the game, though. Yeah, he did. Here, Jason Tatum helping Baines redeem himself. Nice pass on the Celtics fast break. Made it work. The Celtics had some nice passes last night. I think that, I mean, that was a nice little one-hander by Jason Tatum. We saw the Rozier one, and I think another one comes. Yeah, good job, Cavs defense. After the guy throws the ball, then you put your hands up. It would right. help if you put your hands up before that. Good. Here you go. Good point. Good little take. Marcus to Marcus. Smart, the no look to Morris. We were back to the Cavs. You know, we saw them during the season where they would look at the other defender, Jenna, and start to frown and be like, oh, that's your guy. Right. Yeah, the part of last night's game, they were going through that phase again, Nick. All right, listen, there are 450 active NBA players, approximately, okay? You might believe 430 of them aren't tough guys, but two of the tough guys were involved in that highlight. Marcus Smart and Marcus Moore. Yeah, they're like Jenna from your ballet class when you were a kid. Who's the toughest ballerinas oh. in here? Wow. Who are the tough? They're I'm going to call, call Butch. Butch was a tough guy. Yeah. Your ask, big brother Butch. Ask Butch what I'll do to him. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Right. You heard that, Butch? Man, I've seen Butch. Butch bigger than you to this day. I got Butch. Time in for in or out. The Cavs. an asset. <laughs> Cavs are now on the brink of elimination after losing last night. They now have to win two in a row to make it out of the East. CC, you went around on the Cavs still winning the Eastern Conference Finals. Jenna, you and I have been over this all year. We've been getting bombarded by this guy. I'm not even going to say our friend. This guy. We're out. And it's not because the Celtics, if it had been the Sixers, even if it had been Toronto in the finals, I didn't think the Cavs were going to make it to the finals this year. I'm out. I'm out on the Cavs. Out. Nick. Chris Carter officially out on the Cavs beating the yep. Celtics. Pop my hamstring getting off the band. <laughs> it's real sad. Jen, am I concerned about the Cavs? How could you not be? Am I concerned enough to pick the Celtics to win the conference? Too much concern. Hell no! The Cavs are going to make the NBA Finals. You can go ahead and clip this, or a social media team, whatever you guys want to do. See how this looks in 96 hours. We'll put that with one of your other 20 videos they'll have up for the day. <laughs> no, no bitterness there. I'm in. The Cavs still the favorites in this series. They'll win game six. Go ahead and beat LeBron in game seven. I'll believe it when I see it. All right. On the other side of the bracket, Rockets, Warriors, they'll play a pivotal game five tonight. The Rockets are just one point favorites. So Vegas thinks this game will be a close one. Nick, you in or out on the Rockets? It's winning game five tonight. I am in. Houston has had two three-point explosion games in these playoffs. Game five of the first round. Game five of the second round. I think they're going to have one in game five of the third round. I think they're going to bomb from three. I also think Golden State is either going to be without one of those two players, Iggy or Clay, or they're both going to be hampered. For those reasons, I am in on Houston winning tonight. I believe this will be the most important game of the series, not because it's tied up, but can Houston build on the momentum that they snatched in, in Golden State? And also, these two Two injuries. Eagle Dollar, is he going to play after missing game four? Clay, how healthy is he? Is he going to play? And if he plays, how effective? I'm with Houston on this one. Oh. Best team in the NBA this season gets it done tonight. Wow. All right, on to the drama in Minnesota. Reports are now surfacing that if it comes down to it, the Timberwolves would rather choose Carl Anthony Towns over their head coach, Tom Thibodeau. See, see, are you in or out on many keeping? Big cat over Tim. I got to go with the franchise player. But the NBA, now you don't have a bunch of good to great coaches, all right? Nick and I have been going over your list. Thibodeau's a good coach. You want to keep coaches like him in the NBA. I don't like the rep of a player over a coach, but Big Cat is my guy in Minnesota. Listen, you have to do anything to keep Carl Anthony Towns happy, and I wouldn't give him the coach killer rep, rep for this one because we have seen Tom Thibodeau wear on his star players, no matter who the star is, no matter where he's been. So I'm in. I and I'm not sure if in 2018 Tom Thibodeau is still a great NBA head coach. You keep Carl Anthony Towns. All right, so you are in. On to the NFL, where Teddy Bridgewater looked great in yeah. his first OTA with the Jets yesterday. Teddy hasn't started a game since 2015. Some are speculating he could push for the starting job. Nick, you in or out on Teddy Bridgewater being the Jets starter in week one? I am in because I want it to happen, and I'm in because I think a healthy Teddy Bridgewater would be their best option. He's better than Josh McCown, and Sam Darnold might be the future. That doesn't mean he has to be the immediate present. Darnold will start at some point this year. Doesn't mean he has to start in week one. If Teddy's healthy, he's the best quarterback on the roster right now, so I am in.
if Teddy is healthy, Teddy is healthy. Jenna, you brought up two good points. In 2015, when he did start, he also led a Vikings team to the playoffs. So that, to me, is very encouraging for the Jets and Sam Darnold. It's better for his growth that Teddy is ready. Teddy has been very impressive in the offseason workouts. That's the only reason why this this uh, rumor is out there, that he could be the week one starter. Be a great story. We're rooting for him. Great guy. Last, we have Josh Rosen. His head coach was singing his praises, saying, quote, it's not a long shot that Rosen could start for Arizona. CCU in or out on Josh Rosen starting week one for the Cardinals? I'm out. I believe Sam Bradford's going to start in week number one. I believe Josh will play early in the season. I believe it's better for his development to sit on the sideline with this Arizona team and learn under Sam Bradford. But I'm not surprised. All the coaches that have drafted players in the first uh, the first, those first five quarterbacks drafted in the first round, all the coaches are saying they could play the first year. So I'm not surprised that he said that. Listen, I think that because I think Rosen is the most polished of the quarterbacks coming out of college, and because the starter in front of him is the one most injury prone, I'm in on this one. It's a different situation with Baker Mayfield and Cleveland and Tyrod's there, and it's a potentially different situation with Sam Darnold with uh, with Teddy Bridgewater there. Sam Bradford, I don't trust his ability to stay healthy, and I think Rosen's the most pro ready of all the quarterbacks. So for all those reasons, I'm in on him being able to start Week One. God, I'm getting excited for football. Absolutely. Coming up, why is Draymond Green? All kinds of annoyed. His words, not mine. Those weren't his words. Weren't. Those were not his words. Right his words are in the prompter. What